It is with great pleasure that I would like to introduce the Honourable Kevin Humphreys, Minister for Mental Health, Minister for Healthy Lifestyles and for Minister for Western New South Wales. Thank you, Minister. Thanks very much, Kerry, for that introduction. Uh, to my colleague, uh, the Honourable Gillian Skinner, uh, the Minister for Health, uh, Mary Farley. I know to see you. Thanks, Mary, for being here and being uh, a champion for, for innovation. Professor Mary O'Kane, um, I might comment on one of the funds that was just uh, alluded to uh, prior. But I just want to say a couple of things. Um, I had a speech, but I usually digress. But some of the things that came up about naysaying, which I think was Robert and um, Nigel talked about telehealth. Um, I was a naysayer when it came to telehealth. Um, but uh, since being in government and uh, having the mental health portfolio, there's a couple of ironies. Um, I'm the only... Um, electorate in the state that doesn't have a resident psychiatrist and that's a bit ironic when you are uh, the uh, the mental health minister so over time um, I've become used to telehealth and I can tell you uh, it does work uh, it does save lives but most importantly it gives confidence to uh, the care providers that live in remote parts of the state where I'm based um, and in particular to the staff it does prevent uh, representations and it does keep people well uh, living in their context and we become very much reliant on inreach, um, which backs up telehealth. So we know that it does work uh, in those contexts. So it was nice to put uh, some of those things in, in context. The other issues um, that were raised about um, the connectivity of innovation and I think um, Innovation is always driven out of need, and that need is usually inspired by a passion. And I think in innovation, in essence, unlocks the power of the human spirit. I think that's fundamentally what innovation uh, does and what it drives and why, as, as human beings, we always want to do better. Uh, we always want to strive for perfection, but fundamentally, we, we also want to do better for our fellow men and women. And, uh, I think uh, to see and hear what I've heard today uh, and seen outside from around this state uh, is, is tremendously inspiring. So, so thank you for that, for everybody that is involved in innovation. It, it does touch people's lives. It's a very exciting process to be involved in, no doubt. Uh, but it does really have uh, tremendous impacts on, on improving people's lives uh, and, uh, and also their standards of living. The other issue I thought, persistence. Uh, play, precision and perfection. And I think the innovators that I've uh, met over the years, whether it be in, in medical science, whether it's been in agriculture, had a bit to do with uh, in research, most innovators are good at playing. And I reckon as kids, they would have been great to be around. Uh, and I think just seeing what I've seen this afternoon uh, and, and seeing the people that we see in health around New South Wales, uh, and the team that, uh, in particular, Gillian uh, has built, uh, that if you want to get into reform, if you want to improve people's lives, you need champions. But you also need playful people. And I think part of innovation, uh, it's got to be a bit of fun. Uh, because if you are going to enter that pathway or get on that journey, uh, you're going to have setbacks. And I think it was important that uh, Nigel said, you know, you've got to keep the network tight, you've got to keep your team excited, you know, you've got to keep them challenged. Uh, and if you don't have times where you can play around with things, uh, it's, it can be dead boring because it takes time to, to innovate and lead you know, through to uh, uh, that end result, that, that perfection, whether it's a piece of bionic infrastructure or, or whether it's even social innovation just by working and getting people together to collaborate uh, in, in a network. So I think um, you know, the fact that you guys can see, I can see you have a bit of fun and I'm sure uh, your teams would be uh, uh, very respectful of that. And uh, the fact that you've got a very stable um, team and a pathway forward in the industry that you're working in, uh, I think it is, is a credit to you. And that comes back to the leadership issue. Um, you know, we need not just champions, but, but also leaders that can actually manage those people skills. 
Uh, one of the things that Nigel referred to was the Medical Devices Fund, and uh, Professor Mary O'Kane, Chief Scientist that's here today, uh, is oversighting that fund, and that's something that the Health Minister uh, put together. That was something that she felt very strongly about. Uh, those applications have closed, 140 applications, I believe. Uh, the expert panel will be involved in that, and I believe, Robert, you might be involved in that uh, to an extent. But that's really a seed funding uh, proposal, which uh, uh, I'm advised by the Health Minister will probably lead to an additional nearly $100 million of additional funds uh, that, will, uh, that will come off the back of that seed fund. So as everyone alluded to before, you can have a great idea and you can play with it and you can experiment with it. Uh, but at some stage, uh, you're going to enter into what they call that gap between innovation and commercialisation. And for some innovations, uh, particularly the, the high end that we've seen here today, the tertiary end, that gap is very wide and you do need seed funding to, to bridge that gap uh, before you do reach commercialisation. So uh, to, to the Minister, uh, for health in, in her championing innovation. Uh, thank you and, and for the people that are working in and around um, with, uh, with Professor O'Kane, also a big thank you. One of the things that we said we wanted to be uh, as a government, not necessarily in government, but as a government, and uh, I think it was also alluded to today, uh, people usually will tell you no. It's usually the first response in government. A reformed government uh, wanted to be, and we want to be, uh, in New South Wales, a government that tells people and helps people what they can do, not what they can't do. And one of the things, uh, or the dangers of being in government, particularly for a long period of time, if you don't go through a period of renewal, that might be another innovative opportunity, uh, you can get bogged down. Uh, and the first response usually to people is no. So hopefully over time, um, uh, you as innovators and clinicians and people that are living and working in the, in the community and as consumers and as patients, fundamentally more important, uh, you'll get to see us as a government uh, that wants to tell people what they can do. And part of what we're trying to do, and, and it's happening, is breaking down uh, some of those issues around uh, bureaucratic regulation, not just in health but right across the board, uh, but also encouraging uh, what we're seeing today, whether that's a forum in innovation or through Nigel's work in what you're doing through the Agency of Clinical Innovation, so that people have a clear and identifiable pathway uh, into government where they can seek help and when they, where they can basically become part of that network uh, to improvement. If today's forum, which I believe is about, is about stimulating other people uh, and helping motivate people in the area of innovation, I think that's fundamentally the whole importance of, of what we're doing here at the moment. And I know the awards tonight really will uh, will put the icing on the cake for that today, but before I came in, I had the opportunity to wander around and see what all the LHDs were doing and some of those projects firsthand um, I'm, I'm aware of, whether it be inpatient, in community, within the workforce, or at the high end tertiary level of, of biomechanics. Uh, it, it is, it's tremendous. It's, it's a testament to where the health system is uh, not just in New South Wales, but uh, the respect that people working in the New South Wales health system have right across, uh, right across the country. I just wanted to finish on one note, and I didn't get to see the person that was with Parkinson's here today. Uh, if they're here, I'd love to meet up with you, but uh, one of the things that we're quite determined to do in the area of mental health, because I think there's, there's quite some room for clinical uh, innovation, particularly in mental health, and we've got the review of the Act coming up, uh, but one of the um, technologies that people have been denied in New South Wales for, for too long is, uh, is deep brain stimulation, the treatment of chronic depression. Um, we know it works for Parkinson's disease, uh, pain relief, uh, in another uh, with Tourette's, um, but we need to push into uh, the, uh, the area of deep brain stimulation, which the Victorians are doing. Uh, and they're very keen to work with, with New South Wales in, in setting up uh, uh, national centres of excellence and collaboration uh, in, in that area. So um, part of our role as, as, as legislators is trying to build that momentum uh, from people, usually born out of need, so that we can then talk to researchers and innovators and see how we can stimulate that discussion so that uh, we've got people getting better access uh, to better care closer to home, to where they live. 
So um, thank you for inviting me uh, today. And um, certainly Gillian, I know this morning, loves it. This is Gillian's space, I've got to say. I can say it in, I can say it in this forum. Um, and it's, it's about continuous improvement, to be honest. Uh, we've got to do the bread and butter things right in health. Uh, but we've got to create a, a climate of, uh, of continuous improvement for all people, whether they're working very much at the coalface or very much at that, uh, that high-end research and innovative end. So um, thank you again for inviting me. I look forward to uh, being here tonight. Uh, but on behalf of anyone in mental health and uh, health and wellbeing and healthy lifestyles and anyone that's here from Western New South Wales, I know there's a few over here, Steve, from Broken Hill, tremendous. Um, thank you and uh, good luck tonight.